basic building game. Um, not unlike Minecraft, but it's definitely a lot more complex than Minecraft. Um, there is no survival aspects to it, so it's really just about building, cooperating, and ultimately working together to save your planet from destruction by a meteorite that will hit within 30 real-time days. Um, so one of the interesting aspects of Eco is there is this concept of pollution, the idea that you have to build up your technology, uh, working as a group to uh, mine resources and improve your technology enough that you can develop a laser powerful enough to destroy this meteorite before it actually impacts your world. Uh, it's definitely an interesting game. There's a lot of complexity to it. Um, so I wanted to go through my game and show you what I've done. It's definitely something that's consumed a lot of my time or my free time as, over the past few weeks. Just building and finding the materials necessary to move on and doing the research necessary. So. Currently this game is in early access. Uh, they released their 8.0 uh, release back in early February. And uh, they've gone through a few iterations since then, fixing bugs. There's still some bugs. Some are kind of major, affecting how power works. Um, some little nagging bugs that are really annoying. Performance can get to be problematic too over after you've been playing for a long period of time. So there's kind of a what seems to be a memory leak in there, but as far as I remember since I first started this in 7.0 last year that that was there it was present there too so hopefully that they will actually get that corrected at some point but it definitely causes uh, frame rate problems as you play for longer periods of time okay so I just um, spawned inside my building that I just created so I'm gonna go outside here real quick and kind of show you around there's my entrance to my house. So pretty much everything you see here is it was buildable block, for the most part, block by block by myself. Um, so you can see here's a dirt road that I have. I have this going to a clay pit over this way. And I'll give you a, take a look to see what that looks like. And you can see it's kind of getting some sluggish problems occasionally there. Um, there's an overarch. Oh, there's actually an overlay map here, so you can see a lot of stuff. So, what's kind of cool is you can see here's the area that I built around. Uh, here's a asphalt road that I set up, going all the way to my desert mine, uh, and the desert mine is necessary because that's the best place to find iron, which you will need quite a lot of. And here you see some clay. Um, over here, I created. There's a copper mine over here which you'll need for electronics and also within this clay pit if you go further down you can start finding uh, gold you can find gold a lot of different places and pretty much anything you can find different places but obviously it's better to find gold or any you know mineable material at as, as most efficient as possible now, this is just some rock this is actually granite that I pulled out of the uh, pit itself as I was digging further. So you can see this slightly wet looking uh, dirt is clay and that's really important for creating some uh, tier 2 uh, materials like brick and that's you know if we go back once we go back to my home area I'll show you the, the brick itself. Uh, this is some wood I put in here for creating ladders and this is down into the gold pit essentially uh, one thing you have to remember, this is not survival in any method, even though there is food. Uh, but food is really about earning skill points necessary to get um, access to all your different types of skills. Uh, what's interesting about these is you need to read a research book before you actually can 
specialize essentially in a skill. So like here, lumber. You know, I picked up lumber. Lumber by default gives you 16 free unlocks. So you can create some basic lumber stuff. But and then number two, you get unlock a call post. This one doesn't really lead on to as many other ones, but one of the big important things about specializing is it decreases your cost essentially for all your you know crafting items that utilize that specialty so you know decreasing lumber and iron by 80 percent that's quite large so you can see here there's paper milling i never bothered to learn this um, as a specialization i can create paper um, all the all the benefits here will will give you is not you know just decreasing cost, which isn't as critical for paper because paper isn't really used as much on every anything except for like a, a book creating a bookshelf for storing books and things like that. Uh, but engineering, this is a big one. This is where you have your basic, uh, the basic one by specializing. Yeah, come on, gives you a road tool which is kind of important for creating those dirt roads hand plow which would be used for plowing fields for farming which I didn't do too much with and the wood cart which is kind of a big deal because that's how you can carry multiple you know a lot of care there's two types of items in the game there's items that can be stored in your inventory right here you can see food some small materials and things like that and then you have carryable material. I'll show you. Carable material is up here. This, any of the basic building materials, rock, clay, things like that, that's all carryable. So you can only carry to a max of 20 at one time. So, you know, to facilitate, you know, your, your actual mining or collecting of those resources, it helps to have carts you can drop it in there. Now, one thing I wish they'd add is uh, oh. railways and mine carts. So, as I stated earlier, there was um, no survival aspect, so you can fall forever and there's no big deal. Um, but as you can see in here, uh, I think there's some, I may have gotten all the go visible gold at this point, but there was some gold in here that I had gotten, and this is, according to the guide, the best place and the depth necessary right here to find gold in a largest percentage possible. <coughs> There's a lot of different uh, rock types in this version. There wasn't there before. You can see granite. Granite's really important as it's required for <coughs> uh, building concrete, uh, creating asphalt roads as well as um, the other big one I think is related you know it's not I don't think it's related to bricks or maybe it is no it's not related to bricks but those are the two big ones uh, and then shale is an alternate method to creating clay bricks uh, it still requires clay but at a lot lesser percentage and so you essentially can use shale to assist in creating that and then you got the clay there. Oh, down here there was um, another rock called Nice, G-N-E-I-S-S, -S, and that one is also very key in creating concrete. Also, any of the stones you can grind into sand, which is obviously important for glass, um, as well as creating other items that are intermediate items that are necessary. So you can see there's the house. Uh, the lumber part is the house. The brick part on the front there is the kitchen. Uh, here is my oil drilling platform. So you can see I actually have some in action. So I'll go ahead and grab. Th these only let you carry 10 because I guess they're heavier. Here's a water wheel for mechanical energy. These are water pumps or water waste filters, I should say. Uh, my water pumps are actually underground. There's a truck for carrying materials long distances. A fishery, which I don't use, but that would be useful for, for actually converting 
fish, clams, ear sea urchins, etc., into actual uh, digestible food. Here's the uh, blast furnace. And this is how you actually smelt all your uh, copper, gold, and iron, can create steel, and a few other components. And as you can see, there's piping in here. Um, some of these devices require water as an input, and then they will actually spew out sewage as an output. So you can run this without the sewage pipe connected. It just means you're going to be spraying your sewage all over the place and that will cause pollution and ultimately you don't want to have so much pollution here causing a big mess. You can see air pollution isn't too bad. It's pretty isolated to where I am. And ground pollution, little bad, um, probably more related to uh, back when I first started and I didn't have a good setup. Uh, but it does kind of look like there may be some sort of leakage somewhere too. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. Um, these are the waste filters. Incoming here is the sewage. And as you can see, you can't, I guess you can't quite see it here. But you can see it there. I have the piping going straight to there. I also have it connecting to other places. And then it, the sewage kind of splits into these three parallel pipes. And all three of these process up to, I think, 0.2 at once. And then um, output here is clean water. And that clean water I have going right out, whoops, right out there. So the nice part about that is you're keeping it clean. This here, if I can get out of the water, is an aqueduct that you can set up. And that's how I, you, this is only for um, visual purposes. It's not necessary to actually have water for the water wheel to work. Um, maybe in the future releases or the actual final release that it will actually have that as a requirement. I just did that because it doesn't make sense to have a water wheel running and turning without actually having water there. Um, this here is a coal generator. You can drop in coal. It's a combustion engine or steam engine. So basically you're creating steam you're creating electrical power from that. And it's very dirty. Uh, some coal in here. These are what's called stockpiles. This is where you can um, link all your stock and make it available for pickup by any of the actual crafting type stations. So like right here, you can say, okay, you can order, you can move these around, order them, say, okay, this will be the first. So I'm gonna grab everything here first, and everything from here second, and I'll put them in that order as well. That's a repair station right here for repairing my tools. This this here was the mining camp. This was the actual camp that was set up originally when I first started. All I had was this little bit here. This whole area was all very hilly and bumpy, so I had to flatten it out and actually use that. Here's electric light that I have that these uh, wind turbine generators are actually supplying power to. This was my first workshop. This is made from hewn log, and that's just log that gets converted to usable, buildable material. It's got the lowest tier of ability, and certain crafting stations require higher tiers to be usable. Also, as you can see, there's a specific limit to the amount of volume available for use. It says this masonry table uses 25 cubic meters. This whole building itself has 243 cubic units. So you can see I'm using 240 out of 243. So I'm pretty much maxed out without actually increasing the size anymore. Here's my anvil. It allows me to create a whole bunch of uh, you know, tools as well as piping and uh, a few various other things. Some of these I haven't been bothered with. Uh, this is actual carpentry table. lets you do some basic wood stuff. You can create... Um, you have some signs, tables, some furniture, but a big, basically the big part is it allows you to create all the auxiliary tables that you need to go forward from there. Sawmill, as stated, this requires um, a mechanical energy, which is coming from the actual water wheel over there. Um, and this allows you to actually create lumber 
in lumber is a tier two building material, the same tier as the brick here, as you can see, and that's what I used for my actual house was the lumber versus the brick here for my workshop here, uh, which other than aesthetics, uh, it's, it's not really important. I just felt that if I'm going to have a workshop, I probably don't want wood. I'd much rather have brick since it's going to be far more fireproof. Not that fire is a problem in the game. Um, here they have our cement kiln. You can set up projects. You can increase this as necessary. and It'll consume the items and hold them into queue until you have it completed. So cement kiln is very important for creating tier 3 building material, which is reinforced concrete. And that's what this here this is my actual machine shop, which is what I use to create all my higher industrial items. Uh, robotic assembly which lets me create a whole bunch of really high level, very complex stuff. You have um, the electric uh, machinist table. This is where you get all the smaller devices necessary for creating the bigger ones. Uh, rolling creates also corrugated steel which is used which I use for the roofing of this building just so it didn't look all uniform as well as um, some basic steel here also has this um, this actual this uh, corrugated steel door so I can actually close that also down here you can see how large some of these devices are so it requires quite a bit of volume this one barely fits in here i had to really play around with that to get it to fit properly this one the big thing is the steel plates and i'm not sure why it needs to be so big to create steel plates but it does and then whoops caught the side up here we have my electric assembly which creates a lot of the electronic stuff um, over here, I'll probably end up putting a few more things. Uh, I think the electric lathe, which would need it for the advanced combustion engine, which I haven't gotten to yet. Yeah, I think it's over in here. Need the advanced electric lathe and the electric planer, and these let you create steel axle. One one machine to create a steel axle. One machine to create a steel gear. I'm assuming they're glad more recipes for that that are necessary, but they haven't at this at this point. Um, also, go upstairs. This here, these this is uh, the lathe. So essentially, this is the machine, the mechanical lathe versus the electric lathe. And then the same thing with um, this is a drill press or a screw press, uh, which is essentially the same as the other, the super large one that I had the other. The other thing I have up here is the assembly line. This is where you start creating some basic stuff. And you can see I created the electric machinist table from here, which allowed me to access the next tier. And this is where I got a few of the things like steam tractor, my first actual powered or motored uh, vehicle. And also upstairs here, I connected this is here is the um, kiln for creating brick and glass as well as tier 4 building material which is extremely expensive and it'll really as far as I know nothing needs it as requirement unless the laser laboratory whatever requires that this is the rain right table for creating all your road related device you know set stuff like your ramps for going up and down this was important. This is the research table. It's just where you create those books that you can actually learn the skills you need necessarily to do what you need to. And then we have the tailoring table. So that's all that's in here. I'm going to go into the actual house. One other thing I want to talk about is the skill points. There's two multipliers for skill points. Right now I'm playing solo, so I increased the, the um, multiplier really high. But on top of that, you have your food multiplier, which as you can see your nutrition just determines how you want to have a nice balanced nutrition so you can get the highest percentage of multipliers possible. And then you have here your house value. So there's certain rooms that you want to put the same things in and 
that will let you uh, gain even more skill points. Or it used to be skill points. It's just skill ex skill experience essentially until you get to the next level, which you get another specialty. Right now, I have one extra one waiting me, and I'm about to get a second one. But in here, just cozy little room. This actually is a real real chimney. It actually it, it's not set up to work with anything, but it would work if it did. I put a campfire here. This is actually the only place that I can currently cook food because I haven't really taken any of the camping or the cooking skills yet. Um, and I think there's a problem with my game that I don't have enough wild. So right now this is the thing that's holding me back is wheat porridge, which I need to create for the cooking skill book, and I just don't have enough huckleberries and wheat in the world at this point and there's no more wild no I didn't there's nothing else in the wild so I have to actually create it and that's or at least farm it and that's what it's gonna be. <laughs> that's not going to work so well and then so he, in here we have the the bathroom got a washing machine a washing board and a latrine nothing fancy in here I was probably going to create like just a relaxing room maybe have some a table with some chairs for eating and then up here would be the bedroom with the balcony so I have, haven't finished all the creating all the furnishings but you can see you got a nice view up here of the balcony uh, but the location I chose which it looked good. It wasn't because I planned on it being good, but it was a nice location. And you can see we got a bunch of uh, wolves taking a nap on my road here. This is a this is one of the funny things about the game. Now, the animals will just run away. They don't attack you, um, but you do need to attack them for things like leather and increasing your ability, uh, your skills enough in the research. Category. Um, there's a bison over there. They got you know, that looks like a rabbit, a couple rabbits in there. So, yeah, they love to fall asleep on my road. And when we get in my car, I'll see that happen. Okay, let's go downstairs. I mean, I guess I could have jumped off, but I didn't do that. All right, and now I want to talk a little bit about. Well, let's go on this side here. Here's an elevator into my underground uh, stockpiles, uh, mining area, and then tailings uh, storage. Tailings is pollution, or essentially unusable material created from smelting coal, copper, iron, whatever. And it's highly polluting. It really you can see here it's waste product from smelting it's very it's a really strong pollutant and you don't want it to be anywhere on the surface otherwise it will pollute the air and it will pollute the soil and it will just keep spreading from there uh, in, also in here we have um, this is my oil refinery it allows me to create plastic rubber things like that that's necessary in fuel and this was my first um, a combustion generator, which actually could use gasoline. Um, this is, I have this unhooked. Uh, water pump is just pushing it out because I don't actually have it going in. There's a bug with right now that there, if I connect this and nothing, no projects using it, it will just start creating sewage, even though it's not actually running. So it's definitely kind of annoying, which sewage then the waste filters just create compost left and right and actually I didn't show you the basement area but or the kitchen here this is the kitchen here you have a butcher table a mill a cast iron stove kitchen and then this is the farmer table and this is uh, <clears throat> this is what I do with the compost so the sewage turns into compost and it can convert it into compost fertilizer and that gets thrown into the basement and over here as you can see there's a lot of fertilizer just sitting around 
I can just get rid of it with it. You know, you just put it in the soil and it just disappears altogether, but I haven't done that. But so basically this is just a basement area, cellar, if you will, just to keep stuff out of the way and keep it all from being cluttered up here. And that's one of the things I did with um, my stockpile on the second level. So let's go down into my uh, underground area. So, this is the underground stockpile. So the lovely thing about the stockpiles is it's three-dimensional. So there's a, a limit to how far stockpiles um, sphere of influence is. And because it's three-dimensional, you can actually put that stuff downstairs or below ground so that's out of the way. And the other thing I did is there, as you can see, piping going here. This is the piping going to, that's the sewage runoff coming from both the oil refinery as well as the combustion generator over there. These are medium-sized stockpiles. There are three by three by three. There's a tiny stockpile, which is two by th two by two by three, I believe. And then there is a five by five by five, which is a large stockpiles. See, I have another one over here. This one's specific to, I actually named them to make it easier. This is the machine shop stockpile. That way, I, don't, I know what, where they, what they actually are and what they go to, because otherwise you look at this whole thing, you're like, what's what, what's what? But now you know. All right, let's go a little down a little further. Uh, this was my initial mining area that I was working on to find some uh, iron. The um, elevator's manual doesn't actually stop on its own, so you actually have to manually stop it. So basically, this is all this in here is all the different types of rock we have. We have sandstone, which for the most part is really not useful other than creating sand. Um, this here is the aforementioned nice, it's very useful for creating concrete. They have limestone, which is important for creating quick lime, which is necessary for um, creating steel. And then up there we have basalt, which is a harder rock. Uh, it can create concrete as well, but not as efficiently as nice. It's a little too hard. And then finally, the other material that is really important in here is coal. And coal only appears really in grasslands, which is where I am, but this is coal right here. Coal only appears in sandstone, as does uh, iron. That's what you can see. The iron the difference, you can see these red little streaks in the granite blocks is what creates iron. This is regular sandstone. This is the actual iron. Both gold and copper come from granite so that's where you know the area that you need to look at. Um, sandstone tends to be up in the higher elevations, <laughs> I say elevations, depths really, um, and then granite tends to be on the lower depths and we'll go there now and see the bottom lowest area I have. You do get sandstone just the percentages are much lower. So I think that's part of the reason why gold is so much more prevalent at large, lower depths than it would be at the higher depths. Okay, so this whole section, this is just, um, all these carts here are used for throwing in building materials and then taking those up as needed to get rid of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hammer and move this out. I didn't put a door in there because I want to completely seal this area. This is the pollutants. This is the tailings. And each one of these are five by five large stockpiles of tailings that I have dumped in here so it's not polluting the rest of the world. As you can see, there's a lot, of, quite a lot of tailings. So, because I've had to create quite a lot of metal. Um, this is my actual current one that I'm working on. And you can see it's already half full. So next time, I'm going to have to start building another 5x5 five five section, which definitely is time-consuming, 
to create the next tailing stockpile. Now, they have been, the developers have said that they do want to add um, some post processing capabilities to uh, tailings so you actually can consume that and they're not taking up so much area. I mean, hopefully, you can like blast it with water or have it convert to sewage or something. Is at least sewage converts into compost, which is a little bit more volume friendly. Okay, so real quick, I want to show you what copper looks like, although copper does look like that. So I have a another copper area in here. It's all in this area. <laughs> This is my copper mine. This one, I ha this was frustrating because I was trying to find a good close copper area. I finally found one here, and you can see there's quite a bit of copper available in here. I'm hoping this is going to be a really large vein as I go across. One thing you do notice though is it stops where you hit this purplish rock, the gneiss, from, compared to the granite. You're not going to get any copper over here, so it's going to be all where the granite is. So I was very happy that I found that. I'm also happy that I found the gold because that's the last bit that needed because uh, looking at what's needed for the laser. Get there to that there. Yeah, what's needed to create the laser is quite a lot of gold and copper, electronics, stuff, and things like that. Uh, one of the nice things, though, is there's a bunch of different biomes here. It's not, not too unlike how Minecraft is. They have their varying biomes. Right now we're in the grasslands. They have rainforests. They have taiga, tundra. Um, all right, let me take this here. We're going to take the steam truck, the actual truck itself. Can be a little challenging. You can play this in third person, but I don't, I don't like playing third person. Right, I'm having a hard time seeing where I'm going. I think I'm hitting the actual fence. There we go. Probably need to create a little more room there. I put these uh, fences here because it was. <laughs> pretty precarious and I would fall and flip the vehicle quite often because it's definitely not that easy to control. Alright, once we get on this road. So this is the road that I've sort of half paved over to the desert mining camp. And the first time I drove this, I drove this right off here. I would have done it again into that lake required me to actually have to uh, recollect it, meaning all the materials I had to pull out of the vehicle and then reconnect it all. So iron is best found in the desert, which is where we're going now. some pop-up problems sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty funny. So apparently if you are in a enter a block that you really don't fit in, you will fly up in the air and appear either <laughs> above ground, usually above ground, or below ground if there's actually a spot available in that block on the vertical. So apparently I decked into my mine area. So let's see where actually I am. Oh, here we are. I really hope that this is going to work. Ah, thank God. 
because I'd actually, in this one, I didn't create a ladder to get out of. Um, so anyway, this is my underground iron mine. And you can see there's a ton of sandstone here, which is where you find most of the iron. All this area I've already gone through. Um, I think the next big veins I have are over this way. Yeah, you can see some over here. up here as well. Either way, there's still quite a bit of area to actually go through. Yeah, it's running a little cr crankily. Um, and also over here. There's some coal. Yeah, gets a little dark in there, so I turn that on sometime. There's a whole bunch over here as well. Um, so this mine, this has been a really good mine. It's just where most of my iron comes from. Yeah. So basically, that's the game. Um, you know, it's definitely a time-consuming game, but there's a lot of creativity and event things you can do. Is really cool. Let's see if I can find... There it is. There's the mirror. And you can see impact. 19 days, 11 hours. So that's real time. That means since I've been playing this, it's been up for about 10 days. Sometimes I'll leave it running. Yeah, that is kind of weird. I would think that the meteor should be in front of the moon, not behind it. But anyway, so that's the game. Uh, one of the nice things about this that I you don't get to experience solo is you can play with a group of people. You can create banks and economies. You can actually have stores. So you can actually create items and sell it. You can create currencies, create contracts for people to do work and provide them with uh, credit or actual physical currency, which you can do in a mint. Um, also, you can um, create laws and say, you know, you cannot create more pollution than X, etc. Or you need permission to do acts, you know, to actual mine uh, certain areas or unapproved areas. You cannot mine in that sort of thing. So, so basically, that's the game. I definitely think it's one of the it most interesting and definitely complex uh, builder type games out there and I've been, definitely enjoy it so anyway hope you enjoyed this and I'll talk to you soon